All right, welcome back to the Jaguar build. Uh, it's been way too long, and um, we're finally back on this. If you remember from last time, I was working on remaking the uh, the reservoirs for the brake and clutch uh, hydraulic fluid, brake fluid and hydraulic clutch fluid. And this is the original. This is the original piece right here. And when I look at photos of the real car, uh, this is a heat shield, and it should have some clamps holding those bottles in place, and I just really, I didn't like those. So in the last one I made, I made that. Uh, this one, I, I remade it. The, I put the holes in the wrong place. I didn't really think about it very well, so I remade that. And I got a new piece here, got some new holes in here. So the bottles, Again, I was experimenting last time with uh, different fluid color and uh, looking at uh, photos online. Sometimes the fluid was blue, sometimes it was not. And uh, somebody left a comment, I apologize, I forget who it was, I'm bad with names and stuff, but somebody left a comment and said that the blue fluid was for something else, not used anymore, so thank you for telling me that, so I won't be using that. And I thought that looked a little bit too dark um, so I redid them. I remade the three bottles here, the three reservoirs. I still need to put lids on them. And um, that's almost a little too yellow, I think, but I think I'm going to go with it. I don't think it looks horrible. Um, we'll go with those. I, like I said, I still need to make the lids. I need to make the hoses coming out of the bottom. Um, and I have a little bit of material left if I need to make more. But um, I think... I think these are usable. We'll see how they look once they're all mounted. And last video, you also saw these brackets. Those brackets are what's going to clamp onto the square tubing here and hold the heat shield in place. Uh, but as I said, I ran out of hardware. I'm using these little uh, nuts and bolts here. I think it's uh, one millimeter. Yeah, one millimeter bolts. Now, something I've been stressing out about a lot is how to hold the bottles. If you look in the manual, this is the only picture they give me in the manual. They show those brackets holding the three reservoirs, but I can't really tell. I'm having a hard time telling. Um, I mean, there's a clamping point here. So this is one piece coming around, another piece coming up, another piece here. I can't tell how many pieces are there, if that's two or three or four pieces. And plus that just looks like a pain in the butt to try to make. And I was looking at photos of, of uh, you know, the real car online, doing image searches for, you know, engine areas, uh, whatever. And it seems like there's about four or five different ways these bottles are mounted. And um, so I tried to replicate one way that I think will be the easiest. So I made this piece, it's just a strip of brass uh, bent to go around th uh, the three bottles here. And so those will go like this. And then that will bolt onto, if I can hang on to my stuff here, that will bolt onto this piece. And uh, I just soldered two bolts to the back side. I wanted to drill holes and put the bolts through but then the heads of the bolts would have hit the would have hit the bottles but i just soldered them on so uh you know no big deal and so that again a nut and a bolt here and a nut and a bolt here that will then go through the holes of the fire or the uh, heat shield so that'll go in there and then the other holes will bolt through for these brackets on the back side and I have a feeling that this is going to be a pain in the butt to assemble on here. And also, looking at reference photos, the back side of this has a heat shield material. So uh, usually it's like a, a white, I'm assuming it's like a ceramic fiber pad or ceramic fiber blanket. I experimented with trying to uh, age it. Uh, this is just dry brushing black and brown with the brush here trying to mimic some of those photos to look like it was actually heat damaged. And um, I actually have some of that 
ceramic paper. It's like a heat shielding material. Uh, it's actually sold as uh, ceramic paper. It's pretty thin. I could have sworn I had a lot of that stuff left over from a kiln build that I did, and I cannot find it anywhere. So I just used a paper towel. I just coated the back side of that with CA and put a piece of paper towel in there. And it looks fairly convincing when it's on the model. Uh, but again, I need to go in and dry brush uh, to make it look like it's been, uh, you know, heated, burned a little bit. I think that'll help it look a little bit better. But, um, but anyways, that's where I'm at. Um, this is junk. I didn't use that. Uh, so what I need to do now, I need to go through and clean all of these up with some scotch bright and then dip them in liquid tin to uh, tin plate them. That way they don't look like brass because on the real car they're not brass. I would really like to get the engine installed in this video. I don't know how that's going to go. I want to get the reservoirs mounted with the hydraulic lines plumbed in. And I also need to get the um, throttle lever from here to here, a little linkage from here to here, and another throttle lever from here over to a bell crank over here. I would really like to get that done before I put the engine in because I think I just have more room to do that without the engine in there. So that's the plan. Um, and I should probably put those throttle levers in before yeah, it'd probably be easier. So I'm going to finish making these pieces and get those ready to go. But before I mount that, I'll put the throttle levers in. And that's just brass rod cut to length and put in. That shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, so i got to make the bell crank for over here. Again, that shouldn't be too difficult. But, um, but that's where we are. All right, so I got those brass pieces dipped in liquid tin, so they're a little gray colored now. Some of them came out better than others, but um, at least they don't look like brass. And uh, I can hit them a little bit with some Scotch-Brite, kind of shine them up a little bit. I don't think I need to. Um, but uh, So those are ready to go. And I got the throttle linkages put in. So there's one, you can kind of see it there. So there's a linkage there for the throttle to a bell crank that goes over to a bell crank there. And of course that'll connect to the throttle on the engine. And uh, man, zoomed in, you can really see it not being perfect, but um, not too bad. I think it looks all right. So I'll show you how I made those throttle linkages. The way I made it, I have a scrap one that uh, is junk. So it's basically a steel rod with some brass tubing and a little bolt stuck through the end of the brass tubing. I put a dot of CA on the end of the brass tubing to lock the bolt in place. This one is junk because it was too short and I tried to compensate by making that brass tubing longer. And I went to test fit it, and there was some wet CA still inside of there. So when I slid it on, it locked itself on. I couldn't pull it back apart. And uh, it just looked bad having a really short piece and a really long piece. So I scrapped that and started over and made a new one. But um, that is, just to give you an idea, the steel rod, what we just saw, is uh, a little over a millimeter. The tubing is 1.8 millimeter. And the bolt I got in there is half a millimeter. Get it on the uh, 0 0.7. 0 0.7 millimeter for the bolt. And, um, but uh, that's just how I did that one, each end there. I'm kind of rambling. But anyways, so those are in. So the next step is to then do the... Uh, the heat shield that goes here, so that heat shield will mount in just like that with some brackets. There's the back side. I did a little bit of dry brushing with some burnt sienna and uh, some flat black just to try to make it look a little bit burnt and dirty because, uh, again, the exhaust is going to be like right there. And it's just based on reference photos that I saw. 
and you already saw the uh, the reservoirs and the brackets. So all that's left to do is it is is um, is to finish. <laughs> um, I need to do the tubing coming out of the bottom of the reservoirs. So I've got some aluminum tubing, and I drilled a hole in the bottom of the reservoir so the aluminum tubing will just go in. Now when you look at reference photos, um, the actual reservoir has a little plastic fitting sticking out, so a little short piece of heat of um, rubber tubing goes on that, and then the actual pipe or tubing from the rubber tubing and then out to the, out to the uh, piston. So what I'll do is I'll just put a little piece of heat shrink. I'll just put a little piece of heat shrink about that long on there. Shrink that down. Then I'll put some CA on that. Now this wire I'm using, it's copper coated aluminum wire. And um, just this was just a practice piece. But I'm, I'll strip the copper off of it. I'll sand and strip all the copper off of it. Put a little piece of heat shrink tubing on it and stick that in there. And then the other end, the other end will just get bent around and go right into... Uh, right into the uh, clutch cylinder right there. You got the clutch one and the two brake ones right there So those lines from the reservoirs will plug right into there and for the top of the reservoir I Decided to just cut the cap off of the kit pieces Here's the kit pieces. I'm in the process of painting the caps black. My paint was a little bit thin and it just ran down but For the cap There's what the there's what the cap will look like but uh, I'm cutting those tops off. So here's the top. I need to sand that smooth and paint it black. But there's the cap. And that'll just get glued right to the top. But again, that part will be painted black. I've got a metal screw cap lid that goes on top. Now a lot of photos I've looked at... Yeah, it's just falling apart. A lot of photos I looked at, the uh, the cap, the actual servicing cap, was um, just plastic, black plastic. And other photos I looked at, it was metalish looking, like chrome kind of. So the way I made that cap, actually, and when I get it all done, I'll give some better zoomed up close-up photos. I just took a, a 440 Allen head bolt. It has the little serrations on it that looked like the little serrations on the edge of the uh, metal caps that I saw in the photos. And I just filed it down, about a third of that off, to bring it a little bit thinner. I filled the Allen head in with some uh, CA, and then painted it with, uh, with the liquid chrome pen. And that's what gave me that cap. Again, a lot of the photos I looked at, the cap was either chrome or polished aluminum, or some were just black. I think the metal ones look better, or the chrome ones look better. Once it's all together, I'll put a little bit of black wash on it to highlight the little ribs that are around there to make it look a little bit better. I took the brass hardware, and I put it in a little container of black in it. So that makes it look like black oxide hardware. That is the stuff. This is for brass copper i think steel it just says not for aluminum or stainless just says instantly blackens metal and i think that's going to make that hardware look like you know the black oxide automotive hardware like this this is an actual bolt out of my jeep you know it's got that black that black i guess it's black oxide i assume so trying to make trying to make my uh, my brass hardware kind of look like that so, yeah, I've got to spend a few hours putting all this stuff together. And like I said, we'll come back and take a look at it all put together here in, uh, in a little bit. Yeah, take a look where we're at. we got the uh, heat shield on. The three reservoirs. And they're all plumbed up. Uh, these two back here for the brakes will eventually get wires put in. So once I run the wiring, if I decide to do it, I probably will, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Only 98% sure I will. Um, I'll have to drill a couple of holes in here and here for wiring. That one doesn't get any. But um, I would be lying if I told you that was easy. 
Installing all of this was probably the hardest thing I've ever done on a model kit to date. That was uh, trying my patience. That was more difficult than anything I did on those poacher models I did before. But um, yeah, but I think it looks good. I like it. So next up, I want to get the engine in. Oh, and also, I already showed you those, the throttle linkages, I already showed you those. So next up, I want to get the engine in. So in preparation for that, I put the exhaust on. And I need to be thinking about the um, clutch cylinder here. So the cable comes up from, or not the cable, the hose, the tube, comes from there, comes up, and when I look at photos of the real thing, it goes through a flexible section, then it wraps around the back, and then it goes around to the, um, to the clutch cylinder. So the one, I'm going to cheat. I want to do this in two sections because that cable, I keep saying cable, that tubing, that hose, has to come up under here, go behind all of that, behind the brake booster, and then out down there and then to here. So I'm going to do that in two pieces. I have a short piece that's going to go in on this side. So that's going to go behind the brake booster, then plug in to the uh, to the cylinder down there. I got to fish it in this way, something like that. So that'll go in there. And the part that goes on the engine, that'll go in here, go around the engine. Come on, just like that. And then that end will get hidden behind the brake booster. So that'll go in something like that. Now that piece of uh, hose there, I'm actually kind of proud of this. I think I had a good idea here. First off, this is just aluminum wire, so it's easy to bend, easy to control and form. So it's just a piece of heat shrink. And the ends right here, what I did, I cut a little piece of aluminum tubing Right there, I just got a little short piece of aluminum tubing. And I used a tool that I was excited to use for my um, Tesla coil and other electrical projects. And uh, that is, let me show you that. I saw another YouTuber showing how to do good electrical crimps. And um, based on that other video, I bought this from Amazon. I think it's like 25 or 30 bucks. But it's uh, all these different uh, crimp connectors. Got a case full of those things. And then this tool right here. That tool right there. Just squeezes down and crimps whatever size you have here. So I put that short piece of aluminum tubing on. And uh, used this. And crimped it down. And I think that looks really convincing for a 1.8 scale model kit on something that you'll never see once it's put back together. So what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm really wanting to get this engine in. So what I'm going to do is I will put that in and I took another one of those little nuts and I drilled out the threads. So when that gets glued into the, uh, the piston, it'll look like a threaded part screwing it down, screwing it down in place. So. I'll get this one in first, and then I will put this in just like that. It'll get put in just like that, and uh, notice that just tucks in there behind the brake booster there. And then when I put the engine in, I'll go in from the bottom and connect that hose into the actuator for the clutch. So let me get that all together. Then we'll come back and uh, see what it looks like. I wish I had a better camera that would focus better, but um, it is what it is. All right, give me a few minutes. I'll be right back. All right, so the engine's installed, and uh, again, I'd be lying if I said it was easy. Um, it wasn't too bad, though. I just had to uh, make a few adjustments unfortunately um, I don't remember if I showed 
a while ago uh, that I made engine mounts and um, these are the engine mounts that I made and I spent a lot of time measuring and fitting and adjusting with the hood and the engine and the mounts and everything seemed fine and I was just getting ready to epoxy the thing in place when I decided to check the hood fit one last time and for some reason the hood was hitting the engine and uh, which thankfully I decided to check that because that would have been a major pain in the butt to try to resolve that after the epoxy set. I am epoxying each engine mount, the two front ones in place there. So uh, if I would have done that and it would have set up, uh, that would have been a major problem. So I had to take the engine mounts out in order for it to fit. Now I still need to put the uh, intake on, so that will still need to get uh, attached right there. I did not put it on yet uh, because I need room to do other stuff down there and I could always put that on at any time. I have not connected the um, clutch line there yet. Um, there's the end of it. I just gotta I just gotta put it up and put it into there. I still have to put the oil filter on. Uh, the engine would not fit with the oil filter installed. I mean it'll fit. I just could not put it into the hole with the oil filter installed because the oil filter sticks out here a little bit so it would have hit that bar. So I can go into the side and put the oil filter in there. I can do that later. I still need to put the distributor on and the spark plug wires and I still need to put all of the um, all of the uh, chromed acorn nuts back on. If you remember I cut all the acorn nuts off so that I could chrome them and uh, when I say chrome them, I mean chrome paint pen. This thing right here, which is really nice, actually. Not cheap. It's like 10, 10 or 12 bucks for that thing. So I need to glue all those nuts back on, the distributor, the wires, the intake, um, the hose for the, uh, for the clutch, and I think that's about it. I almost forgot the dipstick. That would have been, that would have been terrible if I would have forgot the dipstick. I know the lighting is horrible. Let's see if we can get some better lighting in there. But I got the dipstick in there. I got the lines for the clutch is in. I don't know if you can see it. It goes in there around behind the brake booster then comes out there, comes out and down. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see anything. Um, but uh, it is in, uh, I will let the epoxy set overnight before I do anything else. But um, not looking too bad. I'm liking it. So I think this will be it for this video. It doesn't seem like I got a lot done, but that was a pain in the butt, all of that stuff right in there. Uh, hopefully, I hope it looks good. You know, um, I hope it looks accurate. I hope it looks believable. Uh, I think I like it. Of course, once the hood's closed, you'll never see it. But uh, I, I think I like it. I think I'm happy with everything so far. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's coming along. So that took me a while to get all that stuff sorted. So like I said, this will be it for this video. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking because I'm done and you guys are tired of listening to me. So as always, until next time, thanks for watching.